Does anyone know the similarities between a college party and the Nazi army during World War II? If you said they were all drugged off their tits, you'd be right. Welcome to your favourite day of the week everyone, and in spring 1940, Hitler's army stormed through the low countries of Europe and France in a new type of warfare that took the Allied forces completely by surprise. The lightning warfare known as the Blitzkrieg smashed through the Ardennes forest in only a matter of days, even when the French believed it to be impenetrable. Give me ten good men and some climbing spikes, I'll impregnate the bitch. Within weeks, Paris was occupied unopposed and the tactic allowed the Worm Act to gain more ground than they had achieved in the entirety of the four years of World War I in less than a hundred hours. After the bogged down trench warfare of World War I, the Germans found that speed, combined with quick decisive military battles, was the key to victory. The Blitzkrieg relied on rapid, overwhelming concentration of force consisting of air superiority, fast tanks, constant communication and relentless infantry advances to achieve its results. The tactic aimed to break through opponents' lines of defence and dislocate and disorientate the defenders, making it difficult for them to respond to a continually changing front and defeat them in a decisive Vernichtenschlacht, a battle of annihilation. Who knew I was fluent in German? The most critical component that allowed for the fantastic success of the Blitzkrieg was the element of surprise. Some German officers originally opposed the advance through the Ardennes forest, as they feared the surprise factor would be quickly lost due to soldiers needing to rest up at night, allowing the enemy to regroup. However, when the time came, the German soldiers in a superhuman feat were able to march for up to three days and three nights without rest. So, how were the Nazis able to achieve this extraordinary military undertaking? Had Hitler developed a superhuman soldier that was so super it was undefeatably super and a super Aryan race that was so super it would supernaturally conquer the entire world and usher in a super super thousand year long super third reich that's a lot of soups well no as the nazis third reich only lasted 12 years out of the proposed 1000 as all politicians are a bunch of liars but let's explore what was actually going on with hitler's super super superhuman super soldiers does any soup brand want to sponsor me? After Germany's defeat in World War I, their economy fell into ruins due to the reparations demanded by the Allies in the Treaty of Versailles. As well as blaming Germany for the war, the treaty also demanded they paid compensation of 132 billion gold marks, equal to 269 nice billion dollars today. The Great Depression of the 1920s and 30s compounded Germany's debt and drug use among the general population began to get out of hand as they tried to find ways to deal with the stress of the crisis. Many of the drug addicts were First World War veterans who acquired addictive drugs for pain relief or medical personnel who had easy access to the drugs. While the current German government, the Weimar Republic, was struggling to recover the economy, Germany's pharmaceutical industry was thriving, as they became the leading exporter of opiates such as morphine and cocaine. And like any 20 year old's wet dream, drugs were easily available at any street corner. It was during this time that Hitler's inner circle began touting him as the second coming of Christ. A man so perfect, he was willing to work tirelessly on behalf of his country, and he wouldn't let any toxins, not even coffee, enter his body. One of Hitler's allies remarked, he is all genius and body, and he mortifies that body in a way that would shock people like us. He doesn't drink, he practically only eats vegetables, and he doesn't touch women. I bet he was fun at parties. It was no surprise then that when the Nazi party took over power in 1933, these seductive poisons were outlawed as social use of drugs was considered a sign of personal weakness and a symbol of the country's moral decay following the humiliation of World War I. Huh, there's the T-Rex. 
While the use of drugs such as Blowy were frowned upon, there were some exceptions, as some drugs had their uses. In a society that was hell-bent in keeping up with the zestful Hitler and the Germany Awake slogan the Nazis were bellowing out to the masses, a substance that could integrate the degenerate and weak people of society into the labour market would be revolutionary to the Nazi party and could be sanctioned despite their anti-drug stance. Inspired by the use of US amphetamine Benzedrine at the 1936 Berlin Olympics, Dr. Fritz Hauschild, a chemist of German pharmaceutical company Temmler, began to develop his own wonder drug and released it a year later in 1938. Their new flagship product called Pervitin was described as the ultimate pick-me-up quickly becoming a sensation as a confidence booster and performance enhancer. Pervitin quickly became Germany's new addiction, as everyone from housewives to train drivers was on the stuff due to the ability to be to be purchased without a prescription. The drug even made its way into chocolates, in which women were encouraged to eat two to three, after which they could get their housework done in no time. It wasn't long before this new miracle drug made its way onto the battlefield, a match that would soon be hailed as one made in military heaven. After its outstanding effect on the general populace, Dr. Otto F. Ranke, Director of Research Institute of Defense Physiology, began testing pervertive on military officers. The drug combated fatigue, giving soldiers a fresh state of alertness, renewing concentration and boosting motivation. Not only did it make sleep unnecessary, it also switched off inhibitions giving the consumer a sense of invincibility, which led to an increase in risk taking in life and death situations, making fighting easier or a lot less terrifying for soldiers. At the same time, it also dulled feelings of empathy, hunger, first and sensitivity to pain, turning soldiers into chemically enhanced fighting machines that would give the Nazis the edge during the war. After the tests, despite observing side effects, Ranke concluded that the drug was an excellent substance for rousing a weary squad. We may grasp what far-reaching military significance it would have if we managed to remove the natural tiredness using medical methods. Ranke himself was also a daily user of Pervitin, detailing in his diaries that he could go 36 to 50 hours without any noticeable fatigue. So, with this new miracle drug that the Nazis had produced, which improved productivity, motivation, increased confidence and allowed people to work for longer without having to sleep, you may have the question of why don't we still use this drug today, which is a fair point. Well, pervitin is a powerful methamphetamine, known better as its name today as crystal meth which is now illegal in many countries due to its high addiction and dependency rate, as well as its adverse effects at high dosages. The Nazis went through World War II high off their tits on crystal meth. I bet that's a sentence you didn't think you'd be hearing today. The Nazis cracking crystals had already been used in the invasion of Poland in 1939, and 1940 saw plans to invade France through the Ardennes be drawn up. Experience from the Poland campaign showed the Nazis that military success was crucially influenced by overcoming fatigue of soldiers on which strong demands have been placed. Despite warnings about the adverse effects of pervitin, on April the 17th, 1940, a stimulant decree was sent out to all doctors within the armed forces. Between April and July, the German army and Luftwaffe received more than 35 million methamphetamine tablets. Soldiers were recommended to take one tablet per day, two at night, and another after two to three hours if necessary, with each intake lasting roughly 12 hours. Armies in history had long consumed various psychoactive substances during battles, but the German army was the first to officially rely on a chemical drug. Hitler's forces were now off their tits on meth, and due to the speed and efficiency of the Blitzkrieg under the Germans' doped up soldiers, it quickly led to the fall of Denmark and Norway. Holland and Belgium were soon occupied, and then finally, France. Norman Oller's book, Blitzed, Drugs in Nazi Germany states, Pervitin really helps the person to become a fighting robot. Imagine this on the scale of a couple hundred thousand people, heavily armed and storming into enemy territory. It just becomes a completely crazy situation. The German Blitzkrieg was essentially guided by meth, if not founded by it. 
all the German tank commanders were high, and the meffed up tanks without them, the Blitzkrieg would have almost certainly failed. No drugs, no invasion. Letters from the front line shed light on the mass dependency and addiction the German soldiers had to pervert in, with some writing home begging for more, with it being given the nickname Panzer Schokolade, or tank chocolate by the German tank crews. There are many adverse side effects of the continued taking of meth, which are put on screen now, but the soldiers began suffering from heart problems and were having heart attacks due to their intake. Side effects from the use of pervertin were so serious that the army had to cut back its usage in 1940. Historian Lucas Kamienski says a soldier going into battle on pervertin usually found himself unable to perform effectively for the next day or two. Suffering from a drug hangover and looking more like a zombie than a great warrior, he had to recover from the side effects. Some soldiers turned very violent, committing war crimes against civilians, and others attacked their own officers. It took until 1941 for pervertin to be classed as an intoxicant and an illegal drug by the Nazi health leaders. The entire nation of Germany was becoming addicted to drugs and the tolerance they began to build up began to paralyse whole sections of the population. Anyone who seeks to eliminate fatigue with pervertin can be quite sure it will lead to a creeping depletion of physical and psychological performance reserves, and finally to a complete breakdown. Despite the ban, Hitler's troops still rolled into Russia high off their tits on the crystals, as consumption increased further. The anti-drug stance Hitler and the Nazis spouted as they rose to power was based entirely on hypocrisy. Drug addicts were treated as outlaws and criminals, with the new Führer being the epitome of human perfection who would restore the empire to its former glory. Yet only a few years into his reign, every German citizen's pockets were lined with crystal meth as well as Hitler being high on drug cocktails his personal physician prescribed to him. From 1936 until his death, Hitler saw and trusted his personal physician more than any other person, and had over 800 injections and 74 cocktails containing some 74 different substances, from cocaine to morphine, testosterone and animal hormones, to opiates and stimulants like methamphetamines. Each mix became stronger and stronger to deal with the ever-increasing demands and the toll the war took on Hitler. The effect of drugs on Hitler would have appeared miraculous to onlookers, as one minute he was too frail to even stand up, and the next he was on an unstoppable run at Mussolini. By April 1945, Hitler was consuming multiple pills and having numerous injections per day. Some have theorised that the time he took his own life in his bunker, he was showing early signs of Parkinson's disease, with symptoms such as extreme tremors in his left hand and slurring of his speech. When Hitler became aware of his tremor in 1940, he began to isolate himself as he feared the German public and the Allies would associate it with senility and weakness, or even worse in his mind, syphilis. So in the end, it was more than fitting that the Führer, who was portrayed as the perfect human being and wanted to bring in a race of superhuman superarians, of super Nazis who were so super they were not not super, was the best example of the glaring hypocrisy of the Nazi party. Also, Hitler committed suicide only hours after being married, which shows you how bad marriage is. Don't get married, kids. So, thank you for watching, everyone, and I hope you've all enjoyed this video about the Nazis being off their tits on the cracking crystals. If you have enjoyed, please do leave a like on the video, and if you haven't yet, why not give that subscribe button a little tickle? It really helps out the channel. If you want to see more of me, I do stream on Twitch every week at twitch.tv slash jamiesday. There'll be a link in the description and the comments, so go and click that and give it a follow. And if you subscribe, you get to get your name on all these lovely ducks we were playing lego star wars the other day so you don't want to miss that go and give that a follow and again thank you for watching everyone i hope you all enjoyed and have a good one peace Ooh.